and welcome to the session that is all about creating a thriving children's ministries. What are the steps to building a program so exciting that kids brag about it on Monday and want to bring their friends next Sunday? I am speaking from the context of Hope City Church in Edmonton, where I have been the children's pastor the past six years. And I would really like to be able to unpack with you some key elements that really helped us to develop this thriving children's ministries themed as the lab kids. Here, actually, we're going to play a little bit of a video and give you a little capture on what we do on a Sunday morning and what it would look like. Like I'm trekking through the jungle Or hiking Mount Kilimanjaro It's like I'm deep sea diving with my fishy friends It's never boring when we're exploring It's like I'm on a roller coaster ride Or rushing down on a water slide In the wild you will be my guide On this adventure of a lifetime This adventure of a so I'd like to now just show you some still shots and explain uh, what the different components are of our program. So here we have, and the most, uh, one of the most vital components of our program is the involvement of coaches. So these are the ones that have the hand-to-hand -hand contact with the children. And the children are grouped in carpet spots on the ground. Different, of course, now that it's COVID, they're on chairs and they are physically distanced, but I am talking about uh, pre-COVID. Here we have both our Thursday night service context and our Terwilliger campus context, what it would look like. This is Sunday morning Millwood's campus and this would have been some of the activities that we have, we have done as far as creative team presentations. In the creative team presentations, we involve our volunteers in actively presenting what the story is, what the topic is for the Sunday morning. And they will stay for all the services. They will come early for rehearsal. And in COVID stage right now, they come in for filming to be able to film the content for the Sunday morning. So we have like a stage presentation. We could even involve a time machine that takes us back in time or brings a character back from time to the present time. And here we have science experiments. The guys really love to play with fire. And uh, it's uh, very engaging both for the creative team who help us present, and the children. We see here that we have a kids ministry team. Instead of myself or the coaches leading the music, we started a kids ministry team that would lead the music. And they have such spunk on stage. And it's such an incredible opportunity to do some leader development in these children. So our youngest leader is grade four. We will start training them at grade four to do kids ministry team and uh, which is our dance team. And this is just an amazing uh, time and, and a way to communicate and do worship with the kids and express our, just our worship to God this way. Here we are always training. We are always training and raising up new leaders and this is tech team training. Here we have our preschool experience and the children having a wonderful time here, both in chapel and listening to the presentation. And they play it out in discovery centers, whether it be an art center, whether it be a block center, dramatic play center, all these different centers that they will have opportunity to engage in. We now move to our infant toddler experience. 
And it is also an engaging, loving, and positive experience. This is our preteen experience. So this is an evening we called Surge, and it's all for our preteens. So we have um, a service. We have all kinds of activities that they get to engage in throughout the evening. And they have often told me, this is the best night of the year. So here, we just love engaging in, with the kids. This is uh, Glow Girls Club and Force Boys Club and all the different activities that we have midweek. So how do you get here to a thriving children's ministries where everybody wants to be at, including the volunteers? Well, you start with why. Why is it that you are in children's ministries? What motivates you to be there? And why do you want to be with kids? Why do you want to communicate the gospel? This is a good introspection um, that you can do. Then find out who are you as a leader? There are so many different uh, assessments that you can take to discover more about yourself as a person, as a leader. And that is something that you could find very, very valuable and a help to you to be able to determine what kind of leader are you. Another thing that I really like to do and I would encourage you to do is to develop your stump speech. If you come into a room and you sit at a table and you are to say, who are you? And you could answer these questions. Who am I? Where am I going before heaven? Why am I going there? Who is going with me? And how will we get there? I'll just give you an example and read you my stump speech. I am a passionate Christ follower, wife, mom, daughter, friend, and pastor who loves to engage with people, helping them become all they can for Christ. I lead, collaborate, and co-create with my family and leaders to build teams by investing in people in the local church to reach kids and families, also in my neighborhood and city groups that I'm involved in. I do intentional relationship to enrich this life journey, as well as I love to experience synergy through working with others. Knowing I get there is when I operate most of my time in my sweet spot of giftings, talents, and context as a result of investment. So that's just an example of a stump speech and a good exercise to do to help you determine what kind of a leader are you and what do you bring to the team? Well, you need to have good, healthy relationships with the staff at the church that you're working with and with your lead pastor, as well as the volunteers and the children that you're leading. Be a team player. Be a great supporter of the lead pastor and work hard at that relationship. Let that lead pastor know what motivates you, what helps the strongest part of your leadership giftings come out, and what your dream and vision is for the kids in your church. Make sure that you are communicating and backing up your lead pastor's vision in your children's ministries context. Find out what kind of leader your lead pastor is and perhaps they're results oriented. If they're a results oriented type of lead pastor, then make sure that you're recording the numbers of salvation or um, certain stories that come out of amazing decisions that kids have made in their faith journeys. It's really good for you to do um, a good self test and find out what kind of leader are you? Are you the kind of leader that does it all yourself? And you're saying, if you, I wanna do it, if I want it done right, I've gotta do it myself. Or are you in that realm where you can't seem to get any volunteers to help, so you're doing it all? And this looks a little bit like you. Well, we know all of this kind of leadership 
leads to burnout. So I would like to invite you to talk with your high level leaders around you, your high level volunteers, your high level part-time staff, um, whoever are your leaders that really make a difference in your children's ministries and ask them to collaborate with you on taking a good look at your children's ministries. Have them help you determine where is your children's ministry at right now? Where does it need to go? And what do you need to do about it? This would be where I would encourage a real group think, a collaborative effort here, and find, a, find out what would be a dream children's ministries in your context. If you could dream a dream on what would be a thriving children's ministries, an irresistible space for kids to be in, what would it be? Then think about how can I go about making this dream happen? And what we did at the lab kids here is we took our values that our lead pastor had really spelled out for us. And we translated those in to what our children's ministries context is. So value number one, we are passionate, passionate about our relationship with Christ what he's doing in our lives and in the lives of the people in our church and in our city. Value number two, we try hard. We value excellence and do our best to make it look like we tried hard. We believe God uses our hard work to make a difference. Number three, we lean in. We do whatever it takes to accomplish our vision and goals, even if it falls outside of our comfort zone. Number four, we fight for unity. We choose a culture of peace by getting along, showing respect, and presuming the best of each other. We stand up for each other, and we don't throw each other under the bus. This is a key to healthy volunteer culture and healthy church culture. Value number five, people come first. We choose to love first and lead second but we always do both. People are not a distraction from work. They are the reason that we are here. We're about developing people into amazing followers of Christ. Number six, we point people to Jesus. We seize every opportunity to talk and tell others about Christ and what he's done in our lives. And the last value, we are future oriented. We know we can't stay here and do the same old, same old, but we actively pursue God's next for ourselves and for our church. So taking those values and taking the vision that our lead pastor has, which is to build a church that Greater Edmonton wants to attend, why? Because following Jesus is the best decision anyone could ever make. We take all of this and then we take it into our kids ministries context. And our kids ministries team dreamed up this vision, mission, and values. The lab kids. We dream that every child will have an ongoing experience with God and his words so that they may confidently live out their faith as an agent of influence. Our mission is to facilitate children's spiritual formation by creating a safe, irresistible environment, fostering healthy relationships and embracing families of our community. We value innovation, excellence, safe environments, fun experiences, Bible-based teaching, equipping families, encouraging volunteers, and active compassion for others. Now I know that in this season of COVID, you have had to pivot so much on how you do children's ministries. But know this, if the heart of what you do reflects an engaging vision, mission, and value, you will still have an engaging children's ministries, a thriving children's ministries. 
it's really vital that you create and, and cultivate a healthy volunteer culture. How do you do this? How are you going to achieve this in your context? Well, first of all, you need to make sure that you have a clear vision, a clear direction, and a passion for your ministry. Then you need to ensure that your program is engaging and that the Word of God is going to go forward in power because people will get behind you if there's evidence of this engagement and this power of the Word of God going forward. Irresistible spaces are where children are making discoveries and experiencing God. So what are you doing to create that irresistible space and environment. A lot of children's behavior is guided by the environment. So if you have an engaging irresistible environment, you will find that really there's very little behavior disruptions that you're going to have to deal with. So in making this dream of a thriving children's ministries, we've just covered creating a foster and foster a healthy volunteer culture. In doing this, you will notice that it's easier and easier to recruit volunteers. In fact, they will come to you and say, I want to be about what's happening here in children's ministries. And I know that when people have come into our children's ministries, they have noticed the volunteers' engagement and smiles, and that they're happy to be here. You also need to, in creating that irresistible experience, make sure that you clearly communicate with your volunteers what's happening on a Sunday morning so they feel prepared, and then challenge them and call them to make sure that they have themselves prepared for Sunday morning. You also need to put people around you that will pray, that will counsel you, that will coach you, and give you friendly but truthful feedback on how it really is going. I find kids that are in grades four, five, and six, they can give you the best honest feedback if you have good relationship with them that will help you gauge what you need to do and change and tweak in your children's ministries environment. But your volunteers can also give you very, very strong indicators. Also, a key element of having a, a thriving children's ministries is having valued and invested interest from the board and from the leadership team at your church. It is absolutely vital that a children's ministries leader has a very good relationship with and a communication system with the lead pastor. If this happens, then the passion and the equipping and funding will be going towards children's ministries. What is something that you can take away from this session that your team needs to work on? What is your relationship with your lead pastor like? What is your volunteer culture like? What is the environment that you have children coming into? Is it exciting? Is it irresistible? Or is there some maybe brainstorming that needs to happen to create irresistible spaces and experiences for children all the way from nursery till they graduate into the youth department. Who are you as a leader? What do you bring when you come to children's ministries? And then know your why. Why are you doing this in the first place? We know that God is very interested in having relationship with children. And that is the key age for salvation. If somebody doesn't come to know Jesus as their savior in their childhood, it gets more and more and more difficult as they get older. I would also like to leave this with you. We know the scripture says 
but let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For such of these is what the kingdom of God is for. If we don't have engaging, irresistible experiences for kids, we are actually hindering them from coming to Jesus. They will think that Jesus is boring. The word of God is irrelevant. And those are things that would grieve the heart of God. So look closely at your children's ministries. Is there anything in your ministry that could be hindering children from coming to know Jesus? And knowing the Jesus that is exciting, is always relevant, and wants to work personally in their lives. That is the challenge that I leave with you today. Thank you for listening to my heart about how to have a compelling, thriving children's ministries. I can't wait to see what God is going to do in your context. And if there's anything that I can do, please contact me. Thank you for your time.